Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 29th of January. India's united opposition faces major setback as key regional partner breaks away. Unidentified gunmen kill nine Pakistanis in Iran. Tension between both countries escalates. And Maldives' opposition party to submit impeachment motion against President Moizu. And now for all the details. In a major setback for opposition India Alliance, a key regional partner, JDU, broke away from the bloc and joined hands with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP-led NDA months before general elections. Talking about the decision, JDU Supremo Nitish Kumar said he decided to serve ties with opposition bloc as not everything was all right with the alliance. Congress, which has been conducting long march in country, has said BJP is scared of opposition parties and thus a political drama was created to divert the attention. Notably, Kumar was instrumental in bringing together opposition parties to form the 28-party alliance, which includes the main opposition Congress party. His departure weakens the alliance, which is facing serious turbulence, with regional partners TMC and AAP announcing to contest the elections alone. वो जानते थे कि आज सुबह भारत जोड़ो न्याय यात्रा किशनगंज में आएगा बिहार में प्रवेश होगा बोखलाए हुए हैं परेशानी में हैं क्या करते उन्होंने पलटी के उस्ताद को कहा अभी एक और पलटी मारो और उस पलटी के उस्ताद ने एक और पलटी मारा तो इसमें ये तो बिल्कुल जुगलबंदी है जो हमारे दिल्ली में बैठे हुए हैं झूठ के जगत गुरु और जो पटना में बैठे हुए हैं विश्वासघात के विशेषज्ञ इन दोनों के बीच में ये तालमेल है इन अ मेजर डेवलपमेंट कैनेडा सेट बायोलैटरल टाइज बिटवीन न्यू दिल्ली एंड ओटावा आर इंप्रूविंग एज इंडिया इज नाउ हेल्पिंग विद द ऑन गोइंग प्रोब इनटू द मर्डर ऑफ अ खालिस्तानी टेररिस्ट हरदीप सिंह निजर इन जून लास्ट ईयर In an interview with a foreign media outlet, outgoing national security adviser Jody Thomas said that her discussions with India have been fruitful and described the ongoing changing relationship between both the countries as an evolution. The relations between the two countries saw some bitterness last year following Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's allegations about India's suspected involvement in the killing. India denied the allegation and called it absurd and motivated. India has maintained that Canada has never shared any evidence or information to back its claim that Indian agents were involved in killing of Nijar. Moving on, only a few days ahead of general elections, Pakistan police on Sunday broke up a rally in Karachi by hundreds of supporters of former Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI party. In addition to disruptions, Police also hit activists with sticks and fire tear shells while the supporters were chanting in favor of Khan. Aaj hamara ehtijaji rally tha. Puri Pakistan mein Imran Khan nikal diya tha aur hamara pura man ehtijaji rally tha. Lekin sang ke gundagar police ne hamare ehtijaj ko muntashir kiya aur hamare karkunan ko giriftar kiya gaya. Hum inke par poor muzammat karte hain. The septuagenarian is now in jail after falling out with generals and his party faces what analysts consider a military backed crackdown. His main rival and former three time prime minister Nawaz Sharif has been cleared of all court cases and a lifetime ban to contest the polls. It has been told that the powerful military has thrown its backing behind Sharif for the vote following the standoff with Khan giving the former an edge in a country where army generals exert undue influence over setting up governments notably pakistan will hold its elections on february 8 Amid efforts by Pakistan and Iran to mend ties after tit-for-tat attacks, nine Pakistani nationals were killed in southeastern border area of Iran by unknown gunmen on Saturday. 
According to the relatives of the slain Pakistani nationals, the victims were laborers who were living in Iran's Sarawan for the last 8 to 10 years. Police were looking for three gunmen who escaped after the shooting, Iranian state media said. However, no individuals or groups had claimed responsibility for the shooting so far. Our Aziz Iran ke shahar Siri Kant mein mazduri ki ghar se 8-10 saal se riyash pazir the. Raat 3 baje ke lag bhag subo hume wo zakhmi jo mera bhati hai usne batlaya hai ke raat 3 saare 3 baje ke lag bhag 3 deshat garda hai jin hune aake hume kaha hai ke chalo uth jao Pakistani kaun kaun hai. To unhone firing kar ke 9 aadmi ko shahid kar diya hai. The incident occurred ahead of Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullian's visit to Islamabad. Tensions have heightened between Islamabad and Tehran after the two neighboring nations exchanged missile strikes last week aimed at what each said were militant targets. The visit by the Iranian Foreign Minister is seen as a move towards restoring diplomatic normalcy. Amid diplomatic row with India, the main opposition party of Maldives, which holds majority in the parliament, is set to file an impeachment motion against President Mohammad Muizu, local media reports have suggested. A total of 34 members, including representatives from both the MDP and Democrats, have given their support to the motion for the impeachment of the president that was disrupted yesterday over chaos in the Maldivian parliament. Early on Sunday, the Maldives Parliament witnessed violence when government MPs disturbed the proceedings of Parliament and the speakers. The demonstrators said that accepting the ministers would stymie progress as they demanded the Speaker of Parliament to quit. Muizu, regarded as a pro-China leader, won election last year after winning on his India Out campaign platform under which he called New Delhi's huge influence a threat to sovereignty. Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister Narayan Kaji Shreshtha this past weekend said that Kathmandu and Beijing will be signing the implementation plan of the Belt and Road Initiative very soon. While addressing an event in Kathmandu, Shreshtha said for nations like Nepal, these initiatives open up the possibilities for enhanced connectivity that can transform the economic landscape. He further said that China's support in building critical infrastructure such as roads, bridges and energy projects has been instrumental in propelling Nepal towards economic growth and stability. The local media reports suggest that the signing of the BRI implementation plan between Nepal and China has been one of the prime agenda since early 2020, but an agreement has been elusive due to differences between the two sides over investment modality. Bhutan's liberal politician Shering Topge, leader of the People's Democratic Party, this past weekend officially began his second term as Prime Minister following elections earlier this month. Marking his formal appointment, King Jigme Khesa Namgyal Wangchuk handed a scarf to Topge, a statement on King's official Facebook page said. Topge, who was previously Prime Minister from 2013 to 2018, is the Himalayan nation's fourth freely elected Premier since democracy was established in the country. In his second term, Topge faces the challenge of revamping the $3 billion economy following the COVID-19 pandemic and creating jobs to prevent young Bhutanese people from going abroad. Topge has made clear his wish to maintain a deep relationship with India, the largest donor and trade partner of the Himalayan Kingdom. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.